well placed in the winter sky for observers in both the northern and the southern hemispheres. Orion is one of the easiest constellations to identify in the night sky. The formation of stars is unmistakable, even from a light polluted city. Orion's belt is made up of three bright stars in a row that create an imperfect line and just below the belt, the hilt of a sword, uh, I guess you could say, um, holds a true gem in the night sky, the beautiful Orion Nebula. Bright enough to be seen with the naked eye, also known as M42, this object is a wide complex of gas and dust illuminated by several massive and hot stars at its core called the trapezium. This nebula really plays an important role in astrophysics, and it could be argued that our understanding of star formation is largely based on the Orion Nebula, so it's no surprise that it is uh, one of the most studied and photographed objects in the night sky. The richness of the stellar cluster inside this object makes it an ideal and unique target for high resolution and wide field imaging. I have photographed the Orion Nebula several times over the years through um, different telescopes, telephoto lenses, and have even gotten great results using basic wide field imaging and a tripod. Um, every year it comes around and every year it still seems to impress me. I haven't had very many opportunities to uh, this year to collect any integration time on it yet, so for this project, it's all about the Great Orion Nebula. It's supposed to be clear for the next few nights, so I will be using my William Optics Red Cat 51 refractor telescope paired with an ASI 183. Try to soak in some time. Um, with the Red Cat's 250 millimeter f4.9 focal length, I should be able to also capture the Running Man Nebula and some of the surrounding faint dust uh, within the same image. So. Living in a Bortle 3 area, I'm really able to capture some incredible detail um, with just two nights of imaging this target. So for night one, I will probably use my Optolong Elpro broadband filter to help block out any uh, sky glow or glares from my neighbor's extremely bright and super annoying porch lights. For night two, I'm thinking about switching to uh, a hydrogen alpha filter to just kind of isolate that red color and make it stand out a little more from the background. Um, so yeah, stick around guys, join me for uh, this incredible shot of the Orion Nebula. What's really difficult about photographing this object is it has such a high dynamic range. There's a really bright core and then also a lot of really dark shadows and stuff. So to really get the best image that you can, you want to take multiple uh, sets of exposures at different lengths and you want to kind of process them separately and blend them all together. So you can really preserve that detail in the core and a lot of people have trouble with this or don't know how to do it just right. So I figured uh, this might be a good opportunity to uh, kind of show you guys what I do. So I'm just waiting for Ryan to here a little bit. Um, I think I could probably shoot something uh, while I wait on Orion. I haven't really ever shot any star clusters, so I was thinking maybe the Perseid uh, double cluster tonight. So I get maybe like um, an hour or so on it before Orion rises. So I'll get the telescope all running here and yeah, we'll see what we can do. officially five days later and I haven't had a single clear night until now so I was able to capture a little bit between the clouds last night using the L Pro filter and I was able to get a uh, a pretty strong signal on the little bit of data that I got so hopefully tonight will be uh, clear too and I'm just gonna gather some HA data now on the L Extreme filter so I'm just gonna get everything slewed over and get the telescope focused hopefully this will be the coolest image of Orion that I've ever taken so skies look nice and clear it's around 1130 so Orion's pretty much almost at the zenith. I'll have to do a meridian flip here, so let's get this thing rolling. I need to make sure the telescope's focused and I can see right away that it's not 
So we're gonna get the bottom off mask out. We're gonna take a 10 second test exposure to check focus here. Looks framed up pretty good. I might have to do some small adjustments there, but. So using this mask, this tells me that the telescope is out of focus. Um, with a few small adjustments, I'm able to really center that spike in the middle of the X, uh, and that basically is perfect focus. I'm doing 300 second exposures. We'll see how those look first. Just really going for all that faint red uh, gas around the, around the nebula here, so. Oh, it's just so clear out, but it's super cold. I'm about to go in, let this thing run for a while. We'll take a look at some of that other data on the computer and we'll finish off uh, the end of this video. And I will uh, do a part two where I'll blend in the HA data to this. So I have high hopes. High hopes.